Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Maika, welcome to Floating in Dreams, which is my hobby YouTube channel, where I like to chat, chat about fashion as well as makeup. Most of it is makeup related and a lot of it is eyeshadow palettes and that's why I'm coming to you today with my eyeshadow palette collection video. I like to do this style of video every single year as well as a declutter, but for me a declutter and a collection video are slightly different things. I like to do slightly different things in those videos, which is why I always split them out. So this is going to be the collection video where I just go over the palettes that I have, I do some swatches here and there, show you what I have, what I love, tell you what I don't like about certain palettes, and I'm going to organize this uh, video by brand. So we're just gonna do like flat lace of each brand individually, and then I'm just going to take you through it. Uh, I've got a range of palettes from more high-end and luxury brands, as well as drugstore and indie. I like to try out a lot of eyeshadow and also review quite a lot over here, as well as on my blog. So there's always eyeshadow palette content that I am like talking about and preparing. And that's why I do need to go into a bit of a disclaimer here, because I know that these, these videos sometimes set people off. So if you want to skip this part of the video, then uh, make sure you skip to the timestamp that I will put in the screen right now, so you know where to go if you just want to go to the palettes, if you know the drill, if you're here, if you've been here for a while. But for those people who don't know, who may be new here, I, I, I just love eyeshadow palette and I have been blogging and making videos for more than a decade, which means that I have palettes here that are older and that also is why I have some things because if, if it's a palette I love, I'm not just going to throw it away because it says on the back that it expires within six months. That's namely not the case if you keep your makeup in a dry dark place. I have found through experience that makeup lasts a lot longer and you don't just have to chuck it. If my makeup feels great, smells great, looks great, swatches great, and it still performs great, and it doesn't give me pink eye, I'm still going to use it. So if that's not your spiel, if you don't like that, then please click out of the video right now. Um, I already mentioned that I have a range of brands here, so we're just going to chat about all of those things. And I hope you would just like to strap on for this grand ride where we're just going to talk about all things eyeshadow. So let's just get to it. I'm done rambling, so let's go to these eyeshadow palettes. I hope you enjoy. Right, hi everybody. Uh, we are going to be starting off with Urban Decay because if there is a brand that I have a lot by, it's going to be Urban Decay because they make one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas. Um, the Vice palettes are definitely palettes that I really liked, not only when they came out, but still do, because I think in these palettes you just get a couple of really interesting shimmers. This is the Vice One, which doesn't really have a good like um like single color story there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to these shades that's for sure but it's got a couple of really good one-offs let me show you that this is a stunning shade uh, and these have some of the best purples that urban decay ever did so next we got the vice 2 and the vice 2 is one that again not really much of an actual color story to speak of lots of random shades but i still like a couple of these teals for instance and also this uh, betrayal shade is really pretty it's got a really good silver uh, let me just swatch prank over here which is one of those teals that i love so much I definitely have a type, people. Then we got the Vice 3, and the Vice 3 is one that I didn't get in immediately, and here we get a little bit more of a color story, though. Uh, you get these berries, and then you get some, like, blue-greens. You get a full row of, like, neutrally mattes. You get some cool tones in here as well, and I really, really liked a lot of these shades, actually. What I actually want to show you off here is that a, a palette that a lot of people liked was the Born to Run. So they released the Born to Run a lot later, but I feel that these two pal palettes are quite comparable with the Born to Run skewing more warm toned and the Vice 3 skewing more cool toned. I do like this palette, but you know, it wasn't my favorite, which is why I ended up putting this in my makeup memories box um, because uh, I do like to keep it around for comparison. But if I had to pick, I would choose using the Vice 3 over the Born to Run. And then finally, we got the Vice 4, and here again, not a true, true color story, but we get a little bit more like going on in each row here. We get a green row, you do get some neutral mattes here, you get some warm tones over here, again, some like something purpley as well. So it's got some really good shades, and uh, I actually really like this one called Harlot. Um, this is like this like lavendery kind of 
like dirty kind of shade. Some like other older limited edition palettes are these two. This is the Full Spectrum, which is Urban Decay's take on a full on rainbow palette. Now a lot of people critique this palette because it wasn't perfect. The reason why I hang on to mine is because it has this row of jewel tones, something brighter and something almost pastel leaning. And then the Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass palette has just a really good array of, you know, neutral shades, but then you also get some like murky shades, some brighter shades. It's got a really good mix and you get this lovely like gray toned bluish shade that is just perfect for a smoky eye. And I definitely in this palette, I don't like dark shades all that much, but for me, it's really this side of the palette that I love. Um, and then finally in discontinued palettes that were either also limited edition, we are going to be talking about these guys. The After Dark is another one uh, that's a bit more jewel toned. This was marketed as a companion palette to the Electric, with this being its grungy sister, and I definitely like a grungy vibe more so than a bright vibe. Then an OG that's going to blind you, I'm very sorry, but this is the uh, 15th anniversary jewelry box palette. Especially these four shades over here I like. Let me swatch Omen for you because that's that sort of like black light purple, if you know what I mean. Um, but this is really, really stunning. The Heavy Metals palette, which they did. You get jewel tones, you get neutral tones over here. It's all shimmering goodness. Uh, let me swatch the green over here for you. Again, it's just it just has some really, really good shimmering shades. I can never get rid of it. And then the palette that I was using to block the mirror was the Back Talk. This was their uh, mauve tone palette that they did. Let me take out the mirror here. Um, they did this because of their famous uh, lipstick shade called Back Talk that's in here. A lot of people didn't like this palette, but I have found that if I use some of these cheek products as eyeshadows, this palette becomes a lot more versatile. So if you own this and you feel it very limiting, then definitely pull in some of those shades and and these are the kind of tones I like, so you knew I was gonna like this. And then we have the uh, Deluxe Shadow Box. This was an Urban Decay's line for so long, so this has some OG Urban Decay shades, and that's why I still have it, because some of these shades have been popping up in more recent palettes. For instance, Honey is also in the Naked Honey. I really like Fishnet, that's an OG Urban Decay shade. And then finally, in Discontinued Palettes or that were limited edition, I'm gonna show you my Naked Ultimate Basics, and that's going to bridge the gap to what you see lying off to the side here. So I'm going to take that center stage in a minute. This is an all matte palette though, and I'm not a huge fan of these larger all matte palettes. You do get a good range of shades. It's got lovely quality, but this is one of those things where I'm like, yeah, this is in my makeup memories box because I wasn't using it, but this packaging, I have two of the Naked Basics palettes. I'm gonna buy myself the Naked 3 Mini, but it's not released here yet. I'm still awaiting that release. It ha it's just not in store yet, so I don't know what it, what's going on there. But the Naked Basics one looks like this. It's in all matte palettes as well. And this is the Naked Basics 2, which is a bit more cool tone, so it's my preference. But this, the Naked line, this is where my love for eyeshadow palettes really got started. I think Urban Decay is actually the brand that really got eyeshadow palette started, let's be real here. It all started with the OG Naked, of course. This is also in a Makeup Memories box because I never really use it all that much. They replaced that by the Naked Reloaded and this was just, I think it was just, they shouldn't have done that really. I really am drawn to this part of the palette more so than this part of the palette. Naked 2, my favorite. <laughs> Urban Decay Naked palette, quite possibly. I'm not sure in this lighting you can't really tell, but I've got a huge dent in all of these shades, as well as Chopper, YDK. I mean, it doesn't get any more perfect than this. It's like a rose gold, but it does have lots of coolness to it, so I love that shade. Then the Naked 3 is that other palette of which I said, well, if, I, if it's discontinued or I hit pan, I'm going to buy myself a backup. I really like Mugshot in here. Again, I really like this half of the palette more so than that half. I, I just really, like these shades are just super flattering on my fair skin. For me, it just, it's just perfect everyday palette, for sure. Then Naked Smoky, it wasn't perfect for me because on my fair skin, sadly, a lot of these deep shades 
all look the same, which is a bit of a shame. I just really needed a couple of other shades to make it work. And these three shades I didn't really like. It's really this shade here, uh, slanted and also dagger, like these bluish tone grays. We have the Naked Heat, which is very warm toned. Again, this is more my vibe, more so than that part. I don't know why, but I always gravitate towards the second half of the palette in Naked palettes. But here we got some more mattes, and this is also when the formula started to change for sure. Naked Cherry is also lovely, but they seem to be doing a lot of peachiness in some of these more colorful naked palettes, you could say. I wish they would change up the peach, that's for sure. Um, you do get some interesting shades in here, a good ratio of mattes and shimmers. I mean, I like the palette for sure, but this is my least favorite naked palette. Naked Honey was far more successful for me because this is warm tones that I do like. I do want to point out that if you cover up the two yellow shades in the middle, it's very samey, samey mustardy browns. But if I want to go warm tone neutral, then a mustard brown is where it's at for me. Naked Ultraviolet, I know not a lot of people love this, but for me it worked really well. Again with the peachiness, but on me these peachy shades worked quite well. Uh, especially because this and also that, both of those are like duochrome, so they have a slight different undertone. And again, that like black light kind of purple, that's what I love. And then the latest release, the Urban Decay Naked Wild Wild West. Wild West, I always have... It just reminds me too much of that Will Smith song, okay? Um, cool tones and warm tones. If we go warm tones, then this is probably what I would want. So next up, we've got all of my luxury quads, like little things from a couple of more expensive brands and I've decided to rope Viseart in here. We've got some Chanel going on over here at the bottom. I got a couple of these, um, not gonna lie, like quite a few years ago, so these aren't very recent or anything. This is the one in Road Movie, which is the palette that made me fall in love with Teal. Then next up we have, um, this is Candore Experience. Uh, this palette is still getting quite a bit of hype um, because I saw Mel Thompson featuring this in her recommendations of which Chanel palette she would recommend. But yeah, this is all matte. And um, then I also have two of these Tissé palettes, Tissé Dimension, and this shade right here, that silvery kind of green. Oh, I have nothing else like this in my collection, let me tell you that. Because this is just stunning. It's so, so stunning. And then we have Tissé Fantasy which again, some warmer tones and then that green shade over here is really, really stunning. So yeah, that cocky sort of green shade right there, love it, love it. Speaking of cocky greens, I have this Dior palette which has a pop-up mirror. Uh, I'm not sure what this is called anymore actually. What is this called? Smoky cocky, that's what this is called. And it's got like a deeper cocky shade and this shimmer and then this gold. And I always swatch this shade for you guys because it is such a stunning shade. And then we have some Charlotte Tilbury here. This is the Dolce Vita, which I think has been renamed. I got this a while ago. It was the first Charlotte Tilbury palette I ever bought. It's warm tones, which is not my favorite, but I like busting this out around Christmas time. It's like that perfect Christmas look in a palette. I prefer the Vintage Vamp, uh, especially this like transition-y shade I really, really like. So this is just a little bit more what I like to go for. And then over here we have a palette I received as a free gift with purchase. This is the uh, Easy Eye palette for the Charlotte Darling look. And it's got a couple of really nice shades. The idea is that you can do a very daytime appropriate eye with these three, and this is more nighttime appropriate. And then some other Dior palettes. I'm not sure if you can tell, but some of these I've had for a while because they still have this CD emblem in the packaging. The newer packaging doesn't have that. So this is the last one I got. This is Black Knight, which is from their most recent Christmas collection from 2020. Uh, and this has some really lovely smoky shades. And then we have this one over here. Which one is this? This is Graphic Lights, which is all pink. And then I just have these two, which are Twilight and Night Butterfly. 
and this is the plum version of that palette really like they're identical pretty much and then we have my Viseart little family here um, I used to own one of the 12 pan palettes with the clear lids like they're more expensive ones but I have found that I really just prefer the formula that's going on in these kind of palettes so the Petite Pro 3 was the first one I tried and then I was like ah now I get what everybody's going on about uh, because I had never tried their matte for formula before and their matte formula is really good and I really like how you get some neutrals but then you get that pop of forest green I love a forest green and then because I like that one so much I got the Midsummer and this is again neutrals but then it has uh, this one right here in the bottom row this is such a pretty shade it's got a duochrome to it it's got like a blue flip. I'm not sure if the camera is picking up on that, but that's really pretty. And then, because I like those so much, the Violette Etendue was upside down. I'm terribly sorry. This is a lovely color story that if the Naked Ultraviolet isn't cool toned enough for you, this may be the one to look into. You get six really good like purpley shades. This like lavender taupey kind of shimmer is really lovely and then you get those neutrals at the top and they all have a purpley undertone and then because I like that so much and because I thought this could be a nice companion palette the Petite Four Lilas I thought was nice to go with either the Midsummer or the, Vi uh, the Violette Etendue if I want to make it more neutral toned and this has a taupe so you knew I'd be all over that right? And then we have the Dark Edit, which I bought because Angelica Nuqvist recommended it and said it was a great jewel tone palette. And I, again, like that this doesn't have a black, it just has a very deep navy. I'm not sure about this warm toned row of mattes though, but the shimmers in here are nice. Apart from Urban Decay, I think a brand I have quite a lot by, it would be Colourpop. But before we open these, I have to give you a bit of a disclaimer. Many of these palettes do no longer have the original colour stories. I did a video in May where I reorganized a lot of my Colourpop palettes. I'll make sure to link that in the description box down below so you can have a look at it because I've also forgotten exactly what's going on in every single one. There are a couple that I didn't mess with and the first one I didn't mess with is the Dream Street which was a collab with Kathleen Lights. Um, this is another warm tone palette with like pops of teal. I actually think that the Urban Decay Wild West is actually very reminiscent of this. Now these two palettes I always like to talk about in tandem because the Baroque, the Baroque and the Wine and Only are two lovely, more grungy color stories that I just think that if you have these, I've mentioned this before, uh, this sort of gives me Melt Muerte vibes, anyone? And these two I might as well also talk about in tandem because these I've also not messed around with and that's the That's Taupe, which is, you know I love cool tones, so taupe, an old taupe palette, palette after my heart, and a good neutral palette that is really smack in the middle neutral toned is the Going Coconuts. Now there are a couple of things here as well that I haven't played around with because they're new to me and that would be the High Tide and the Cherry Crush. Um, old teal palette, anyone? And the Cherry Crush. And then we have all of these mini palettes. I've got the Thumper palette here from the Bambi collection. Cool tones and then you have that lovely like soft green in the middle. This is the Cream Soda palette which was released this spring. It's got two mattes, two shimmers. This is a bit of a weird textured shade but not quite glitter so I'm not sure what, what I think of this yet. I still need to play around with it. The other ones I kept in the boxes because I felt that the box was more interesting than the actual palette. So this is the uh, Color Vision, yeah Color Vision palette. And this is that pink neon palette, so it's got neutrals and then a, a pop of neon pink. Then we have the Nuke Ink palette from the Animal Crossing collection. This is a really pretty green look and uh, I do regret a, a little bit because it does have a press glitter. I thought this was going to be like a metallic high shine shade. Then we have the Cashmere Forever palette, which was part of their more colorful lineup. It's a five pan and this is their purple palette because I wanted to see if purples is something that Colourpop can actually do in a palette and I feel that this is a bit too pink for my liking. And then we have the Ballad palette which was part of their first like five pan collection. I mean it's got cool tones so you knew I was gonna try this and again that shade in the middle, Drama. 
And everything else that I now have lying in front of you are palettes that I have rearranged. The Blush Crush doesn't contain shades from the Blush Crush. This is my Deep Potted Stone Cold Fox. I had four like neutrally pinky, mauve leaning palettes, the Flutter by, Menage a Moi, Making Moths, and Blush Crush. And that's what ended up in both of these palettes, including a couple of shades from the Bling Boss Jaclyn Hill Morphe Vault palettes. Um, then in the Lilac You A Lot, I didn't change a lot, I just popped this shade in. And then the Smoke Show I thought was perfect, almost, but it had a white shade and I never really use white. So I popped a shade from the Blue Moon in here. And then we have my two green palettes. I also used to own the Just My Luck, but I ended up distributing those shades over the Meant To Be. And the same thing went with the Mandalorian. I felt it wasn't grungy enough. I wanted more greens. So I popped some of those browns out and put some greens in. And then the Aha Honey, like the Meant To Be, I felt wasn't dimensional enough. So again, a deep potted shade from a Jaclyn Hill Morphe Vault, and this is the brown from The Mandalorian, The Child. And then the Strawberry Shake contains shades from Strawberry Shake, Ooh La La, and It's My Pleasure. And then the main squeeze, I've also changed a little bit. I believe I popped a shade from the uh, Strawberry Shake in here, and this again came from Ring the Alarm from the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Vault. Next up are my Kaleidos palettes, and I've talked about these palettes just recently over here on my channel. Kaleidos does some amazing shimmers. I got this, like these five palettes as a set when they did the set, so some of these are no longer available. This one, I believe, is being reformulated, so you should be able to purchase this again sometime in the future. Um, and this shimmer right here is really lovely. And then we have the Cyber Bronze, which is just, you know, a lot of warm tone browns, so it wasn't my favorite for that reason, but it does have this stunning silver right there in the middle. So that's why, you know, it's one of the best silvers in my in entire collection. Astro Pink then, that's favorites territory, that's for sure. It's got some really lovely shimmers. It's got the neutrals that I need. And then this shade, if you just layer this over a black, oh, it's, it's magical. It's magical. And then we have the VR Neon, which again, it's got quite a lot of mattes. And since that's not my favorite formula, I do prefer sort of this pinky shimmer here. That's really lovely, but I don't really keep it around for those bright shades. So I do understand why they've discontinued this one. And then another favorite, the Electro Turquoise, Futurism 5. And this is now a color story that more brands seem to be doing, like that Cat's Breath palette from Odin's Eye, uh, oranges with pops of teal or blue. And then towards the end of summer last year, we got these last two, the uh, Lunar Lavender and Sashimi City. This is the Lunar Lavender, and here I know a lot of people have been critiquing the palette that these two shades don't show up for them, but for me, they're absolutely fine, and again, some stunning shimmers in here, but let me just swatch a matte for a change as well, because, you know, I do like this a lot. Ooh, there's some shadow that's falling off. And then we got the Sashimi City, which is a palette that kind of surprised me, because I was like, oh, it's just a boring neutral palette, but it ended up being a lot better than I thought. And then, finally, from Kaleidos, I have the Club Nebula palette with Angelica Nukvist. I played around with this for the first time this summer, and I have to say I really enjoy this palette. I feel it really nicely comes together, and this shade in the middle called Astro, let me swatch that one for you. That's the, the shade that for me really ties the entire palette together. Next up is Juvia's Place, and Juvia's Place is another one of those brands where I'm like, I really like you, but let's just talk an OG. I'm not sure, yeah, you can see it over here. So this is the Saharan palette from Juvia's, and this is such a lovely little palette, but I felt that there was one shade in here, right here in the bottom, that I didn't love all that much. So the shade uh, that was called Lulu was a peachy shade, and I didn't love it. So this is actually a shade from the Afrique called Fifi, and that's the one I ended up keeping. One of my favorite palettes from Juvia's is the Nomad, which is why I wanted to feature it straight away. This is a lovely grungy color story. It's got those murky greens, this brownish green shade, which is very different. These yellows are a nice added pop of brightness if you so want to. And then we have uh, a really nice dark brown here, some neutrals. You can just do a lot with this. And I love this like olive green shimmer shade. It's just, 
It's so, so stunning. So recently, Juvia's Place has been doing a lot of these like mini palettes as well, so I've got a few of those. The mauves I think is really stunning, and what makes the palette is that shimmer in the middle. And then we have the Nubian Royal, which I kind of bought because I thought it might complement the violets very well. And I think it does. It makes the violets just a little bit more workable. It does have a pressed glitter, which isn't my favorite, but I really like this vibrant purple shade that it has. Uh, and then the violets is one of my favorites. You get four shimmers, two mattes. I do have to say, though, that some of these shades are also in the magic. The berries was one that I didn't buy myself. This was gifted to me by someone and I ended up pulling a very stunning look out of it. And especially this shade right here at the bottom, I think is really pretty. It just has a really, really interesting uh, color story to it. And then we have the taupes as well. And this is probably one of my favorites of these mini palettes. I know not a lot of people like this because it is so light, but I'm fair skinned, so this is gonna work for me. And then one that they are sadly discontinuing, they have announced that they will be stopping the stocking of the Tri palette. So get it while you can, if it's still available. You get some really lovely teals in here. These are duochromes. This brown has a green undertone. I could have done without the oranges, not gonna lie. And then I've got a few more of these nine pans from Juvia's. The Festival is one that I've seen a lot of people decluttering now, but I just feel this is such a unique color story. This, this, and this, they pull like neons on me because they are so bright. And then this charcoal gray. I mean, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to have a dark shade that is a shimmer, but this is the kind of shimmer you could potentially use in the crease. And then the palette that has the best mattes out of the entire Juvia's Place line is the Saharan, because that matte is the best matte they have ever, ever done. You do get six shimmers in here, and this is another like warm tone palette with a pop of blue that I do really like. Like if it has a blue or a teal so that I can sort of make it pop a little bit more, it works a lot better. And then we have the Deuce, which has sadly been discontinued, I'm afraid. But this is a lovely palette with some like lighter shades, sort of like that cupcake macaron kind of thing. I think that's also what the names are named after. And then the bright palette that I kept, I did, I decluttered my Warrior 3. Uh, this just works a lot better on me and I love how this is brights, but then you do get a pop of neutral in this one. And then we've got some larger palettes. Now, I'm not a large palette kind of person, I'm just not, but I bought these before they did the minis. So the Masquerade, I would definitely have bought the mini off if I were to ever be so inclined. I'm still thinking of de like depotting this and getting rid of the neutrals and just keeping the bright shades because that's what I use this palette for, really. The Magic, I would have I would take out these top two rows and keep the bottom two rows. These eight shades, if this could have been a palette, I'd be very happy. And then we have the Walhalla 2, which is the another palette that took me by surprise. I kind of bought this on a whim when it released. I was like, oh, I'm not entirely sure. It's really big. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's got these flaky glitters that I don't love, but these three rows are life. I thought we could keep going with some more affordable stuff and these are all of the palettes that I have from drugstore brands but where I don't have too many from a single brand so that's why this perhaps looks a little haphazard. Um, I still have one Milani palette which is a soft and sultry. This is one of my favorite palettes I think of all time that's ever been released. It is not as cool toned as everybody says but it's got some lovely shades. I also really like my e.l.f. Earth and Ocean, it was the other way, it was upside down, I'm terribly sorry, but yeah, I do really like this palette as well. This is one of my favorite drugstore palettes as well. Underwater, I mean, we know we, I love teals, so you knew I was gonna swatch that shade, were you? I mean, I just really like this. And then the Retro Paradise, I actually just finished trying out for the first time, because this didn't launch here until last winter. Uh, we didn't get it until February, and it's such a summertime palette that I sort of kept it around to play around with this. And this shade, what's it called? Parizo? Parizio? I'm not sure. But that's a duochrome. Who knew that Elf did good duochromes? I didn't. A palette that I, like a brand that I tried for the first time in the past year is Beauty Bay. This is their Book of Magic palette. Uh, currently the Wilderness palette is much raved about. That's a bit newer. This you can no longer get, but this is my kind of color story with blues, teals, greens, purples, and some neutrals. It's got some lovely shades. So this shade is what everybody's going gaga for, but I actually 
exactly like this. This like murky blue shade. I like that kind of shade. So let's talk about that palette I grabbed to block out the mirror because this is brand new to me. This is from Action, which is a budget store here in the Netherlands and they Netherlands and they have a brand called Max and More and this is their Floral Romance eyeshadow palette. I've only swatched it so far and this I mean it looks really pretty just the color story itself, but the shimmer quality in here is quite good. This shade here in the middle I mean, the mattes, I thought, mm, those I really have to see how they build, but this is, this is a four euro and 50 cent eyeshadow palette. Another brand that does really good affordable eyeshadow is LA Girl and their main stage desert dream eyeshadow palette is a bit fragile, so I hope it hasn't cracked any further. Oh no, we're doing good. We're doing good. This is what the color story looks like. It's got... A lot of blues, greens, purples, that again, and then this row of shimmers at the top. And this was a shade that came a bit cracked, but I pressed it back in. But it's just a lovely, it's a bit flaky, but it's a lovely shade. Which is their Downplay palette, which again has this flaky shade that is really stunning. Um, and just some really good neutrals. This is a bit more, it's a bit dark for me uh, to really make it work, but... And then we have my OG loves, the sleek palettes. I used to have a bunch of these and I've only kept the ones that I like the most. The Eau Naturelle is not officially anymore in my makeup collection, but it's in a makeup memories box. The Storm is a palette that I hold near and dear to my heart. I think you can still buy this. This steel blue shade, but it's this grayish blue and I don't have anything like exactly like this in my collection. And then we have the Sunset, which is another warm tone palette with a pop of blue. And I think that this is one of the best formulas Sleek has ever done. That's a more unique one actually in my collection. And then we have the Calm Before the Storm, which is a blue green palette and it's really lovely. It's got some blues, some turquoisey greens, some cooler tone neutrals. And then we've got some new things here. I haven't tried these yet on my face, but these were sent to me by a subscriber from Germany who was like, hey, do you want to try some Rival? And I was like, sure, I cannot get this brand where I live. Uh, so she, she, she sent me the Smoky palette, and this is the color story. And then she also sent me the Jungle, which is a bit more unique. So you get some greens, some oranges, and then some like browns, and then these berry shades. And finally, we have some Makeup Revolution. This is all that's left of my Makeup Revolution collection. This is Turkish Delight, which is one of my favorites. For such a little palette, I feel this has a very unique color story. I have the Mini Tasty Avocado, which is their all green palette. And then we have the Black Pearl palette, which came out last year. It's cool tones, nobody talks about this. It's got a lavender. That is really nice. And this like dark gray and then some taupes in the mattes. So you knew I was gonna try that when I spotted that on their website. Since we are stuck in the drugstore category, we're talking essence right now. And there are a lot of palettes here that are not actually part of my active makeup collection anymore. But because they were limited editions, I still have them. So this is actually one of the first limited editions from Essence that I ever reviewed, it was their Lights of Orient collection. That shade does not look right anymore, but yeah, I kind of keep this around because it had really pretty packaging and it's the first time I got to review like a limited edition Essence um, I, uh, like collection. Then these two, one, which is this one, the silver glitter show I do still use, but the pink glitter show I do not. Uh, and the pink glitter show, was just a little bit too samey samey. How can you say no to sparkly packaging that moves around? Like, I can't get rid of that. And the silver glitter show I do still play around with from time to time because this is just my kind of color story. I kept this over a steel palette I used to own. Uh, this you can no longer get either, but this is still used in my makeup collection, the My Must Haves palette. This you could compile yourself. It's got a couple of really nice shades. Not all of the shades in the line were created equal, but I ended up with good shades. We have the Out in the Wild palette. This is the berry or the blossom one. You also have a green one. Uh, this is okay. It's got good enough formula, but it's not my favorite. What does not get decluttered are limited edition collections, especially if they are like these lovely Disney princess things. 
but this is the Ariel palette. This is my favorite of these three. Very nice, lovely blue greens with, oh, it's so stunning. Um, the Jasmine palette has a lovely color story with all of these purples and warm tones and like rich shades. But in the end, this didn't really perform very well. And then the Bell palette was actually surprisingly fun to play with. It's got a lot of mattes, but then you get those pops of blue that really remind me of her like outfits and stuff. And in the joint collection that they did at the end of 2020, so Essence did the princesses and Catrice did the villains. I got all the palettes. You have the Snow White palette, which for Snow White, it's not that Snow White, but it is a good neutral palette. Um, but my favorite one perhaps has to be the Ariel. This has a little bit more interest to it, but again, for Ariel, Under the Sea, I feel that their first version, this, is much more Ariel to me. And then we have the Aurora palette. So this is again that rosy toned one. When I tried it, was that this Out Into the Wild palette is essentially the same shades. And finally, we have these little palettes. Now, apparently there are two more. We don't have those in Europe. I haven't spotted them yet. Uh, but the Ice Ice Baby, uh, this was the least impressive to me when I swatched them. I haven't used all of these on my eyes yet. It's got some fun shimmers, but the blues weren't all that. Bronze This Way is a nice little bit of a warm toned moment. I already played around with the I Like to Move It, Move It in my Essence Get Ready With Me, where I review all the new in products that we got. And this shade really impressed me. And then we have Dancing Green. So for talking essence, we also need to talk Catrice. A palette that was discontinued that I keep around in my makeup memories box is this. And it's not because it's so special, but I just really like this color story. However, these shades have expired like years ago. And I also really like the name of this because this is called Yellow Submagreen like the Beatles song. Last year, they did a Daisy Duck and a Minnie Mouse collection. So there were nail polishes in this and two little palettes. The Daisy Duck one was a little bit purpley. This one, quality-wise, was okay. The neutrals were better than the purples, and especially that shade in the middle got Harpan really quickly. Uh, but the Minnie Mouse one was really lovely. Uh, this red shade it, at the bottom was a bit of a duochrome. It's a bit more warmer toned. It had some really nice shades in here. This palette is the Clean ID uh, Natural Nude Eyeshadow Palette. It's vegan. And this was sadly a little bit disappointing. The Evil Queen palette was also disappointing because it, it had pressed glitters. A lot of these shades are very repetitive. Uh, these marble shades didn't really show up very well. So I, I would just end up with like a handful of shades in this palette that I could still use, but the packaging and it looks really pretty. And for the Ursula palette here as well, um, this is probably the one that's truest to the characters, like coloring and all that in terms of the color story. This was probably my favorite color-wise, but not quality-wise. Because quality-wise, I thought the Maleficent one was better, with like those murky greens, it's got the grunge. But again, I feel there's a lot of repeat shades and those pressed glitters just made it not perfect for me. But this is a very old palette from Catrice. This is the London Collection Eye and Cheek Palette. This was, I think, like with Essence, this was the first limited edition Catrice item I think I ever bought. So that's why this has been in my collection for a while. It still comes with the eyeliner and the little brush, you got cheek products, and then this really nice like cool tone color story. A limited edition that was released this year, but I haven't heard anybody talking about is the Neon Nude palette. And this one, I this pleasantly surprised me because it's it's got warm tone neutrals and then some rosy tone neutrals with a pink, a purple, and an orange. And then the Queen Couture eyeshadow palette came with the silver glitter and pink glitter show from Essence, so it was from that same line, the Sister Royal Party Collection, I think it was called. And this is the palette from Catrice I keep around. And then we end up with the Catrice palettes that they have come out with, uh, they have come out with more recently. So they've come out with these Pro Slim palettes and these five in a box palettes, and I own all of the ones that have been released. The Pro Slim ones, I just did a dedicated video to, so I'll make sure to link that description in the description box down below. Um, my favorite one has to be the Vintage Soul because it is the more unique color story here. The newest one is Natural Spirit, which has some khaki greens. This is also really nice, was also in my top 
three, you could say. And then the next gen nudes is my other favorite because it just has some really lovely rosy tones. And these are good rosy tones. I think a lot of people might like them. The Neon Earth has really good quality, but it is very warm tones, so not necessarily my cup of tea. And then the two lackluster ones are the Lavender Breeze. It's not that lavender and it's very, very light and very sort of thin as well. Like you definitely need to build these up. This is not the same quality I feel than the other ones and the same goes for the Peach Origin. It's very light and it wasn't my favorite. And then <laughs> the entire lineup of the Catrice Five in a Box palettes. Catrice has just launched two more, which I believe are these two. These are the original four that you can now also buy in the US. So we have Golden Tone Nude, which is lovely. Um, and then we have Warm Spice Look, which is also lovely, but very warm toned. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is a soft rosy look. And this to me is that rosy taupey shade that I love so much in my Urban Decay Naked 3 and like YDK. It's like that sort of shade for me. And then this I also love because it's got the taupiness, but then that steely blue shade is really lovely too. And these shimmers are lovely. And then they just recently came out with these. This is the Vivid Burgundy look. And then here we have uh, the actually the replacement of this the modern smoky look. This I can no longer find here in Europe. Here the shimmer I really feel is quite thin and not as lovely as in the other palettes. All right, next up is Too Faced and we're gonna go through these quickly because I've shown these a lot and I think we all know what these palettes look like. I have not bought a Too Faced palette in quite some time, as you can tell. I still have the Just Peachy mattes. I don't love a lot of matte palettes, but this is a matte palette that I do really like. And then these are the chocolate bar palettes that I have. Uh, a Makeup Memory Box Keep is the original chocolate bar. I've said it many times before, for my fair skin, this is way too dark. Which is why my favorite one is the white chocolate bar, because this, this is a fair, cool-toned person's dream. I'm just gonna swatch sugared raisin for you because this is this eyeshadow palette collection video is incomplete without a swatch of this i also like the semi-sweet quite a bit because it's got some cooler tones i like rum raisin in here but this again it doesn't really have all the shimmers that i would love and then we have the chocolate bonbons which is my other favorite Cafe Ole, I love. Molasses Chip is really nice. I love this Earl Grey shade. I love these like gray tone blues or blue tone grays, whatever you want to call it. The Sweet Peach, I dislike the scent so, so much till this day. Uh, the scent has lovely, like has luckily worn off. Luscious is great. I like the Lini quite a bit as well. These two over here, these two over there. And then the Gingerbread Spice is quite warm toned. You get a duochrome over here, but Spiced Rum, that's the one that really, really speaks to me. Next up is Huda Beauty. I love my Mercury Retrograde. I've recommended this a lot for like a fun palette. You want something neutral, but also some nice bright pops of something, and you have a fair skin tone. This is absolutely amazing. Desert Dusk. This is one of my all-time favorite palettes, mainly because, it, yes, it's got those warm tones and everybody goes for this, but this cashmere shade is one of the best neutrals in my entire collection. My most recent purchase is the Wild Obsessions Jaguar palette. Is this, are these still the Obsessions palettes? I think they are, right? So this one appealed to me the most out of the entire new launch. Um, you can tell why, I hope. And this shade here, this like spotty shade. And then the brown chocolate browns. This was the only one from that brown collection she came out with that I really liked because I feel it was the most dimensional even though it's quite warm toned. But here, you know, again, you get some lovely shimmers in this. Now, and I know that these haste palettes weren't a lot of people's favorites, but since I have fair skin, I felt these were perhaps better for someone with my complexion than most people. The khaki wasn't that green, but I feel that it does have enough. And then the sand was sort of like rosy tone neutrals. And then you just, again, like, here I am again with this rose gold shade. I mean, 
who am I, right? And then we have the purple one, which I do really like. It has this like purpliness to it, but it's again not too purple. The neon orange obsession was my only pick from the neon line because I felt that this had shades that could have been put in every single one of the three. I have the electric obsessions, which in terms of rainbow palettes, I just feel that this is nicely curated and I love how it has this like teal to deepen things up with. And then we have the lilac obsessions, which is from their pastel line. And here again, if you have a fair skin tone and you're looking for something purpley, I feel that this is a really, really lovely color story. For fair skin tones, it, it works really well. And then I have the nude rich and the nude light because together, I feel they made a very perfect 18 pan color story. And then I've got the three colorful ones, which perhaps are my least favorite ones out of everything she's done. The blue especially wasn't great quality, but if we've got a shimmering teal, you know I'm not gonna declutter something. And then here as well, this is green and this is lovely greens as well. I love that shade in the middle. And then this is the amethyst where I feel that these two shades are too similar. But again, it's got some really lovely shades. All right, so I've lumped two brands together here. We've got some Lorac and we've got some The Bomb. To start off with Lorac over here, we have the Pro One, a uh, very OG YouTube, of course. Again, not my favorite, even though it was raved about a lot. It's again, a little bit too dark, I feel. Like for me, the palette kind of stops there. Lorac Pro Two, similar story, but I do really like that jade shade. Uh, Chrome I like. I really like the navy, the plum and nectar. Uh, but the Lorac Pro 3 is my personal favorite. I've got some dips in these more so than the others. This is a neutral color story that where I really feel like, okay, I can use every single shade. And then the Pro 4, uh, I kind of bought it because I was like, ooh, yeah, I do really like the color story of this. But I, to be quite fair, I'm not really, I'm never really thinking of this. But now that I look at it again, I'm like, oh, yeah, this silver mauve shade. Like, this is that, like, taupey, mauve -y sort of look that I just really like. And then we have my little Le Bomb family. New Tude. Sexy, silly, standoffish. That's, like, my go-to look with this palette. And then this is the rosy tone palette for people with warmer or deeper complexions. Uh, this is very similar to Naked 3, I find, but then deeper. And then we have the new Tude, which is warm tones. And these warm tones work quite well on me because you get these rosy tones over here. Then we have Meet, the Meet Matte palette. So Meet Matte Nude, Lovely Mattes, Meet Matador. This is my favorite one of the three because it has all the shades I like and Meet Matrimony. Now I knew I would have to give you an overview of like palettes where I only have one by a brand. So these are all of my one-offs you could say. And I, I found like some stray drugstore things to, uh, to go in here as well. Uh, so let me just start over here. Um, this is another makeup memory box kind of thing. This is the pure My Little Pony the Movie eyeshadow palette. And the reason why this got to go into my makeup memories box is because this is the palette that taught me how to play with color. Um, I still have my Monarch palette from KVD. This is in my makeup memories box. I don't really use this anymore, but I love this packaging. Then we have the Sigma Enchanted palette. This is a, a nice palette. I don't love the quality as some other people. It's got a lovely forest green. That green is lovely. That shade is lovely. So again, this side of the palette I love. That side of the palette, not so much. Who remembers this? <laughs> Oh my word! So this is how far some of these palettes go back. This is the Sephora and Pantone Universe collab from light years ago, it seems. I still have this. The shadow quality was not that great. Uh, I've used this like once or twice, but because I bought this on a trip to Boston, I kind of keep it around for that reason. Something that I do still use is this guy, the OPV Tropical Dreams. Now, if the tribe gets discontinued and you can't buy it, this is a good alternative. You get those origins, you get those really bright greens, but in here you get some pops of blue that the tribe doesn't have. I sneakily had a palette lying off to the side here, which is my Color, Ra uh, Color Rain Queen of Hearts palette. This palette was raved about a few years ago, and that's why I ended up purchasing it. Really only for this one shade called Your Highness? No, Royal Highness, that's what it's called. 
A palette that I feel quite similar about is the Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Storm. I finally wrote the review for this and I was like, yeah, these four shades are lovely, but the further I go towards that side of the palette, the harder pressed these shades are. Then we have the Violet Voss Sugared Crystals. This I want to keep around because it has a lot of fun shimmers in here, that's for sure. Now a palette that's definitely not going to go anywhere. Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse. This is my kind of color story, that's for sure. Um, this taupey shade here and this blue. I love this. It's got some warm tones, so it's not too, too cool tone. So if you are a bit more warm toned leaning, you can still make it work. But this was stunning and it's got really good quality too. Then very new to me is Lois Cosmetics Meet Me at the Underworld. You get some lovely grungy greens in here, some grungy berry shades. This is a fall color story after my dreams. Um, makeup memory box time again. Benefit smoking eyes. This is beat up, used, abused, very expired. I think I bought this on one of my first trips to London ever by myself. I used to use this all the time when I did my master's degree a couple of years ago and I just remember taking this with me all the time. Another new to me palette, Kimchi, Kimchi Chic. Um, I spotted this and I was like, hey, virgin mojito you i you like i like you but i'm not sure about the quality of these i mean they swatch nicely enough so but i'm not sure how these go on the eyes well something i do love is the sugar pill a fun size palette pastels with some brighter pops of something and it's got one of my favorite bright shades which this doesn't swatch well this palette, but on the eyes it performs a lot better, I find. But yeah, Periwinkles, that's my favorite, like, bright pop of something. Kiko, Color Fever Quad, they no longer do this, but I use this again in a full face of Kiko, and I was like, oh, right, Kiko, I really like this palette. And this is Peach C, which is a K-Beauty brand, and this is their... Falling in Eyeshadow Palette in 03 Falling in Pink. Doesn't this remind you of those little ColourPop 4 pans? And that shade. I mean, again, a rose gold. I do apologize. So some more one-offs. These are the last ones. Hesina 2 from Blush Tribe. Um, but yeah, blue, greens, and purples. I don't have many other palettes that can do all of this in one palette. Sample Beauty. This is on the declutter pile, but I am going to be doing a video about all of my blue, green, purple palettes. So that's why I did hang on to it for now, but this is gonna go once I've done that video. And then LA Splash Classic Horror. If you want a rainbow color story that is grungy, please buy this. It's lovely. And then finally, we have a Marc Jacobs palette. This is the Starlet. This is another one of those makeup memory box things. <laughs> it's an all metallic palette with like bronzes and, and golds and silvers and all that. It's, it's got lovely quality. Not gonna lie, and I bought this to try the brand, but I just, this is what made me realize that again, an old shimmer palette is just not for me. Alrighty, so we're, we're continuing with ABH. So Anastasia does have a couple of palettes that, as you can see, I have. I don't have that many from the Norvina collection. I have decided that this is just not my favorite formula. So I've got the volume four. And I just, I didn't really like the quality of this palette, you guys. I'm just, I don't know, this matte gave me quite a bit of trouble trying to blend it out. We've got some pressed glitters in here, which is not my favorite. And you don't really get that many very impressive shimmers. And then I tried one of their mini palettes, and I've said it many times before. It's got pressed glitters that are undisclosed on the packaging because this is not a pressed pigment. It's got so much texture. This is what ABH should have kept doing. <laughs> <laughs> the original sort of lineup with the modern renaissance who didn't own this at some point i love the berry shades like red ochre every year in the fall time i reach for this i still use this sultry i think this is a lot of people's favorite for me it ended up just not being perfect because it's not cool toned enough i love cyborg i love cinder teak rose quartz like it's got some gorgeous shimmers dystopian is a lovely cool tone brown but what i'm missing is a really good cool tone transition the palette that of course had a lot of mixed reviews uh, axis which is a lovely teal shade is the most difficult to work with in the palette but 
it's my favorite shade. And then we have the Prism, which again, I think this was discontinued. I keep it around for Throne and for Dimension mainly. And then the Jackie Ina palette, you guys. If there is an ABH palette that just like took me by surprise, but I'm not sure if Miss Jackie has some lovely, lovely insight into makeup because she made a palette. And she puts in one of the most stunning taupes in the world. Kylie Bible then, this was the last one I got together with the volume four. Uh, and this has cool tones, warm tones, and they go very very well, surprisingly as well. I wasn't, I was very surprised. The only shade in here I really don't like is that yellow tone gold. And then we have Soft Glam, which is one of my favorite like warmer tone neutral palettes that is still neutral on me. It's very glam, it's very sort of like woza. Uh, when I do wear it, it's not like neutral for every day, but Dusty Rose, I love. The original Norvina palette, I really like this actually. Again, these two shades should have been purples or cool tones. It would have worked a lot better then for me. It's not perfect. And then finally the Riviera, which a lot of people are decluttering, but I like this. It's got neutrals, it's got something pop, something to pop things with, and then you have Seaside. This is what Seaside looks like, and this shade, <laughs> like for real? That that I want to put all over my lid instantly. We have my Natasha Denona and my BH Cosmetics. We've got the Lila palette, which has one shade which wasn't from the Lila. This is the gold that was in the middle of the gold palette, which I have over here. And now I like this color story a lot better. And then we have the gold palette, which is my favorite. I took Dragon Bite from the Lila and put it in the middle of this palette, and now I like this palette even more. And then possibly my favorite Natasha Denona palette, the Glam. If you don't own the Urban Decay Naked 2, but you want to get that sort of cool tone color story, this is the replacement for it. Only five mattes, everything else is shimmer. I mean, this is just lovely. And then I have the Mini Love and the Mini Retro. I caved. I spotted this at Sephora when I was there over the summertime. I went shopping in Paris um, a few weeks ago and I picked this up because once I saw this in real life, I was like, yup, I need this. I really, really need this. So that's why I did buy this. Mini Love, really nice too. It's got some interesting like shimmering shades here as well. I really like the color story of this and I didn't like the color story of the larger size love palette, so that's why I went with the mini for that. And then we have my BH little family. I definitely don't have as much as some other people here on YouTube do, uh, but yeah, I love myself some BH. However, I'm not a huge fan of all of these palettes. My love affair started with the Love in London, which has been discontinued, but I have hopes that they're going to be redoing this because they seem to be redoing quite a few of their travels, travel palettes that they did before. It's got some really good like uh, warm tones in here as well to make it a little bit more warm tone, but everything is either neutral or cool. And you know, you get this really lovely like navy shade in here. I mean, the blueberry muffin seems to be a lot of people's favorites. I like to try the Passion in Paris as well. Uh, but this was not my favorite. There are just a couple of shades in here that I like. However, I think that pairing this with the Love in London will give me some more options. I didn't like the undertones of these two shades. They pulled very purple on me, uh, and I didn't love that. But this shade here, tempting. I mean, yeah. I mean, I like the blues in this palette, but I didn't really like the neutrals. The Sweet Shop Pistachio palette, I love this. It's got some really nice undertones, some really nice shades. And this, this shimmer right here, this, this, yeah. And then we have two palettes that you can no longer buy. This is the Fairy Lights palette, which was a limited edition for Christmas. This has a similar uh, problem that I have with the Blueberry Muffin, that the color story looks a lot more interesting in the pan. But once you start using it, you're a little bit like, ah, I'm not sure. And then we have the Royal Affair, which I decluttered in 2019. And then because I tried some more BH and loved it so much, I ended up pulling it from my declutter pile. Next brand to feature here is going to be Zoeva, and I have quite a few Zoeva palettes. I did declutter a couple over time, and any of the ones I'm showing you today, 
you will have a hard time finding because they've de de they've just discontinued almost everything that they were doing and I just haven't really bought any of the new palettes yet. Um, but yeah, the Precious was a limited edition a holiday coll collection, I think 2019. It's got some really lovely shades, especially like Exquisite. This is a really lovely shade, again a bit like it's a rose gold but it's got like a purple sort of running through it we've got their sort of chocolate bar kind of things i think coco blend like caused a bit of a stir at some point on youtube uh the cranberry shade in here is very nice but this is not my kind of color story but i keep it around because again i do also like this one and i quite like that so as a palette by itself i don't use it but there are shades i dip in and out of and then we have caramel melange which uh, is a warm tone color story that I do like, but here, this shade, like, for someone who doesn't like warm tones, like, I do have a couple of palettes that I, I just want to keep around, and this is one of them. Spice of Life, then, we have this palette here, and especially this shade here, unlike any other, I keep swatching this in videos like this because I just love it. And then we have Blanc Fusion, which is my favorite Zoeva palette. This is like Naked Honey, but for fair tone, people with cooler undertones. Full row of mattes, full row of neutrals, and this white is not just a straight up white because when you blend this, it actually has a gold flip to it, so that's a duochrome. The On Taupe, for instance, has two duochromes down here. Uh, let me swatch this one here. This, again, it doesn't look that interesting, but then it has a bit of a blue flip to it. Then we have the Melody, which has, again, some really good shades in here. It's got some cool tones. And then in here, it has another duochrome. And then we have the IC palette, and this is perhaps one of the more unique ones. Here you get some jewel tones, but they're all quite cool toned. The Premier palette is another one where I'm like, ah. It's got some really lovely mauve like warmer, like deeper mauves in the bottom. And then you get some warm tones at the top. Um, but I've also really liked that murky green that's in here. That's also really lovely. So it's like a greenish gold kind of shade. And then we have the Heritage, which is one of my favorites. And here you get another like really good like taupey shade, but it's like a bronzy taupe. It just has a little bit of a different quality to it than most taupes in my collection. And then the Eclectic Eyes has some stunning shades as well, but here as well you get these like murky shades, like these two shimmers. These are so soft, you have to be very careful when you stick your fingers in. But that, that's it Eva, you guys. Right, um, some brands that I have like two or three palettes by, but not that many. Got some Fenty little snap shadows here. These I haven't played around with yet because I was going to do a full face of Fenty. I still, I'm still gonna do it, you guys. I'm still, I'm still gonna do it, but it's gonna go moved, it's, it's been moved into September. So I've got, which is this? This is Smoky. And then because I felt it was a little too dark, perhaps, I also bought number two, which is Cool Neutrals. And I thought that these could nicely perhaps complement each other. Then um, Persona Cosmetics, this is the Identity 2. This is my least favorite of these two Persona palettes, but I do really like this. It's got some stunning quality, it's got some jewel tones, which I appreciate. Especially like this like dirty purpley shade. So let me talk about that then first. Uh, this is one of my favorite neutral eyeshadow palettes by now, you guys may have replaced the In Bloom actually as a perfect neutral palette for me, uh, but this, like, yeah, you know how, you know that I like these kind of shades. And then we have Tarte. Um, this is the Tarte High Tides and Good Vibes palette, which I keep around because these are the only pressed glitters that I, I was actually ever able to really work with. <laughs> uh, very reflective here, but yeah, we, we get a teal. So, like, I just, you know. And then Tartlet Toasted. This is one where I'm like, should I declutter this by now? It's warm tone neutrals. I think I would reach for my Urban Decay Naked Heat over this if I ever were to go for a warm tone. And then we have In Bloom, and like I said, the um, Persona Identity one may have replaced this, but 
Now that I look at it again, I'm like, yeah, cool tone, neutral, warm toned. It's got everything in one go. Alrighty, so we've got some Dose of Colors and we've got She Glam. Dose of Colors is tried and true, the She Glam I still have to try. This is the Splash Bash. I mean, I just, I was taken with this color story and the pigmentation of these, like, it's not the best ever eyeshadow, I'm sure, but I mean, it's workable. Then I have Deep Feelings, which is a cool tone neutral palette. A Hello Yellow, which is sort of like yellow, but with some grungy greens thrown in the mix. Then we have Cool Cactus, or Cactus Cool. It's a cool tone green color story. And then we have the Wolf Calls. I believe this is one of their newer releases, and this is more like bluish gray tones. And then those of colors, these are some of my tried and true. Uh, along with my Urban Decay Naked Basics, these three matte palettes are the ones I go for when I want to do an all matte look. So, Blushing Berries, Berry Smoky Eye, anyone? Marvelous Mauves. If you need a good mauve palette, then this is probably the one that is going to appeal to you a lot. And these are so, so smooth. Pretty Cool is probably my favorite, though. That Green Tone Taupe. I mean, I love taupe, but if they have a green undertone, you make me very happy. And then a smoky soiree and the cutting edge. They, these were not my favorite, I guess. The cutting edge was a bit disappointing because it wasn't as green as I'd like, which was a bit of a shame. And the smoky soiree, I thought this was more red toned, but it's actually more like a brown. But I, this was my favorite of the two, actually, because here as well, you get some really nice shimmers in here, too. Right, next up would be Pat McGrath, because that's another brand that I've got quite a few few by by now. This is the collection she did for Holiday 2020. So this is the Inner Stellar, and the one of these is Risque Rose, and the, this is Risky Rose, and then this is Fleur Vantasia, and these have some lovely shades. Um, these look squads have, a, like, not the same formula to some of the like special shades, but I still use them the same way. Um, and then we have Rose Decadence, which I know wasn't everybody's favorite, but I really liked it because it had some really nice shades, and I'm not, usually not a big fan of mattes, but my favorite shade in this palette is this matte, which is just a really lovely like peachy sort of shade. I really like the way this worked in the crease. And then, just to make life a little easier, I already took them out of the boxes. So we have Nocturnal Nirvana, uh, which I love, especially that green shade and that purple. And then we have Ritualistic Rose, which this... This does have the... Uh, because these are the Blitz Astral Quads, so these do have, like, the special shades. So these are the only two larger palettes I have from the brand. Subliminal is my favorite. This is my color story. Cool Tones, this, uh, this matte here is so stunning. It's such a good, just a good cool tone, like, not super neutral, but still neutral leaning color story. And then you get these really interesting sh shades to top things off with. And then we have Divine Rose 2, which I do also really like, but I think Divine Rose 1 is better for me someone with my complexion. Uh, I have to say, though, that again, here we get some lovely shades. I love this pink. That's what really makes the palette for me, because that's, that's the shade that really turns this entire palette into something more interesting. Okay, we're getting there, people. We are only still going to be talking about indie makeup from here on out. It's Freakin' Bats, the collab with Bubeen. I finally got arrived, this finally arrived in April for me. So it's been a while, and I feel this is such a great fall color story. So I'm sort of hanging on to this to really try it in the fall time. Arcana. Oh my word, if you want a good cool toned, uh, cool toned, jewel toned color story, I highly recommend this. This is stunning. And this is why I wanted to own It Freaking Bats, because I was like, Shroud knows how to do an eyeshadow. And then we have the Creepy Cute, which is pastels. This is not my favorite pastel palette because I feel we're missing a few shades here, uh, but Planchette is lovely enough to keep this entire palette around for to be quite fair. Uh, Game Beauty then, this is a brand that I just got in the mail. So the Adventure palette is the only one with a pressed glitter, and I don't hate it. 
<laughs> uh, you got a lot of greens in here and then you get the brown and the purple. These two shades I probably will never play around with again, but I just thought this could be a fun formula to try and I love the packaging design on this. This is the Fantasy palette, which is pastels essentially, really. And these are nice, but they do feel like these mattes feel a little thin, but if these can be built up, I'm not going to be mad about it. And then we have the Victory palette, which the reason why the review, why this appealed to me in the end, because it's got a lot of warm tones, but it's got those teals and this, that shimmer. I mean, it's so pretty. <laughs> Last but not least, my Menagerie Cosmetics. And I got the Pastel Pop, and this is my favorite pastel palette because I feel you get the full rainbow, but in pastels, I do like to use, for instance, my Violet Voss Sugar Crystals to add a bit of sparkle to this because I feel that this one shimmer you get is too limiting. Instead of the black and the white, I would have wanted two more shimmers. Violet Ink wasn't as violet as I'd hoped. It's definitely more inky blue, especially because of these two shades. Um, it's got lovely quality though, I have to say. I do really... Um, but yeah, these are lovely, lovely eyeshadows. I mean, great pigmentation. Then we have the Dragon Child, which they made when they were still called Makeup Monsters. Very unique color story. These purples at the bottom are lovely. And that's really what I keep, why I keep this palette sort of around, because it's got that lovely quality. So the Feral is my favorite menagerie palette. If you get just one from them, make it this one, because it's just, it's unique, and it's got lovely shades, and it just has everything you could possibly want because it's got neutral so you can do an all neutral look but you can also go super vibrant and colorful and fiery or very green toned i mean this pink duochrome shimmer like and then we have the whale song which was a bit grungier than i had expected at first glance i mean it's got some lovely shades and really if you can just keep it around for that shade then i'm happy and then Flight Club, again, here we get some undertones that I feel didn't really mix and match. Some of the shades pull quite similarly on me, but I do really like it. And it's got this lovely purple down here. All right, so we've got some Nabla as well here. My OG favorite, like, first ever purchase from Nabla was the Soul Blooming. They discontinued these unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, I love this palette. You get some warm tones, you get some cooler tone neutrals, and you get some lovely, like, periwinkle kind of shades. I do apologize for how stained my hands are. Unfortunately, the side-by-side -side wasn't my favorite. I felt that the colors just didn't blend very well on me. Uh, I felt that the undertones in here just weren't exactly my personal favorite. We have the Secret Palette, which I did really like. It was a bit more neutral toned in the end than I had expected, but I mean, this shade here, called Rosemary, it's so, so incredibly pretty. And then my Cutie Palette family. I own all of these now. I decided to buy the ones I didn't have yet, and then they released two new ones, so I now have all of these. I'm still playing around with some of these as well because I haven't played around with all of them. The Nude is one that I still need to play around with. It looks like a really stunning, really good neutral color story for my fair skin tone. The one that took me by surprise is the Coral. This is not my kind of color story, you think? But it's got some lovely, lovely things going on. And like this shimmer here, I mean, oh, it's a bit similar to that uh, Menagerie shade I just showed you. The Platinum, of course, I was going to love. This taupey shade is everything. I mean, it's so, so stunning. The Midnight I just played around with because I ended up loving that too. Uh, this teal shimmer that's going to transform like everything into the high heavens. I love it. The berry is probably one of my least favorite ones of the ones that I tried because this it's not really coming together and I already owned the original from Alchemy 2.0 so this one I like it but I don't love it. And then we have the Metropolitan which again I'm hoping is going to surprise me. I haven't tried it yet. And the one that I was like oh analog and then they do this, and it's very warm toned, but it, it's got such interesting undertones, you guys. I mean, when I swatched this for the first time, I was super impressed. So yeah, this is definitely a palette that I still want to play around with as well. Next up, 
Melt Cosmetics Lime Crime. That's what we still have going on here. So Venus XL from Lime Crime is um, what I, like if you were to expand the berries of the ABH Modern Renaissance, this is what we get. And I just really, I really like this palette. A very lovely cool tone color story is the Venus XL2. Not a lot of people liked it, but on my fair skin, this shows up really, really well. Um, the Immortalis, I really liked as well. You get a really lovely taupe here. Um, it's not perfect because it can be quite gray. I wish there would have been like a taupe transition rather than, you know, a gray one, but then I'm just being picky. But. And then Venus 3, I haven't used that much, but I really liked the combination of like these like rosy tones with the purples and then they did something with teals so you knew i was all over that i have fallen a little bit in love with melt over time though <laughs> that's for sure uh it started for me with stacks this is the she's in party stack i want to buy the she's in parties palette and then compare it to this and and from all the other stacks i've had in the past i've kept the shades from the gunmetal one shade from the rust and one shade from the blueprint and then i just have the other shades here because i wasn't really reaching for it and the gunmetal is my favorite stack by them then we have the waiting room palette from the beetlejuice collection which is the grungy red and gray tone palette which i've tried i've played around with it it wasn't perfect in my, for my makeup tastes to be quite fair but this is the kind of palette where I feel I need to pull in some other shades and then it can shine truly. Smoke Sessions is one that's a little fragile in my case because this shade came a little bit broken. It's really lovely, it's got some good shimmer shades. It's not my favorite because I feel I don't get enough variety in the shades, but this goes really well with the Gemini. And the Mary Jane, is it my favorite melt palette? It could very well be. I love this shade, I love this palette. Came out this year, and where a lot of people didn't like it, I just like having up unpopular opinions when it comes to makeup, I guess, but this I really liked. I mean, you do need a finger to make these work, but I prefer to apply uh, shimmers with my fingers anyways. And then we have the Gemini, which is the original like grungy green color story. I wish they would bring this back out because it's been out of stock for such a long time. And then we have Millennial Pinks, which again, not a lot of people liked. I really like mine. It's rosy tones with some cool tones, like these grays. Oh, on my fair skin, this was lovely. So for me, this worked really well. And then the Muerte. Um, if you have uh, the Baroque and the Wine and Only from Colourpop, you can dupe this out. And I'm waiting to see if the High Tide can dupe out some of these like tealy shades at the end. Uh, then you definitely have a perfect, um, like, muerte dupe, uh, or perfect dupe, not, but a, at least an alternative, so that if you missed out on it, you can get it. And this navy shimmer, that's my favorite one in the entire palette. All right, and this is the last bit that I have for you guys. Uh, I've got some Lethal Cosmetics as well, so I wanted to show you my Lethal Singles as well. I did videos on all of these and like rearranging them and all that, so definitely check that out. So I've rearranged it into like a purpley palette. I have rearranged them into like this blue-green grungy color story, and then I've also put all of my greens together in one palette. Um, then we have some certified palettes. This one I kept around for just to do a video with, but it, it's essentially decluttered because I felt it was a little bit too bright of a blue-green palette for my liking. And then we have the certified Tropical Wonders. This is one of my favorite rainbow palettes, but we have another favorite rainbow palette in here. Um, I bought all three of the Sydney Gray's Temptalia collab. I'm not sure in what order they actually are supposed to go, but this is Radiant Reflection. Then we have the On The Horizon, which is also lovely. You only really get like two or three mattes in each of these palettes and everything else is shimmer. So if you were looking into this and you don't love shimmers, then don't buy these. Uh, the Quintessence was my favorite from the get-go. Like when this released, I was like, that I want to get. And I went for the deep in this and the light in the other two because here you get another teal and you get a darker taupe instead of light grays. Then we have... The Odin's Eye palettes I have, I have the Solomona, which I really enjoy. 
Uh, it's got some really nice like shimmers in here, that unexpected pop of something lilac. I do feel these two shades are quite similar, but it was a lovely quality, which is why I decided to buy the Norns, and the Norns palette really, really surprised me. This has such a lovely color story, you guys. It looks like it's got warmth, but on me, everything pulled cool toned. So these three palettes are from Glam Shop, and they are a Polish brand. Uh, this, I believe, is just called the Green Palette. This is Polish for green, and this is what that color story looks like. This is still unused. I still need to try it out. Then Coco Sanka is, I believe, Coconut Biscuit, translated, and it's a cool-toned color story that I wanted to try. And then we've got the blue one, Blue 2020, which looks like this. Then we have Ace Beauté uh, Slice of Paradise. This is a full matte color story with two shimmers and especially this Fruit Dove shimmer. That's the one that I really like in this palette. The Ace Beauté Oceanic palette is my favorite of the two. It's got every blue-green shade I could possibly want. If I could keep just one blue-green palette, it was this one. Michelle Lou then, this is a British um, indie brand, and the Fawn palette is my Nabla side by side, because it has very similar shades, but this worked much better on me. Let me swatch water reflections for you, because this... And then we have the Witchcraft palette, which was my first one, and this is the perfect grungy fall time color story. Let's be real here. I'm dropping it. Let's swatch this dark green, because... And then we have Nomad. We, uh, I already owned the Tokyo Harajuku when I filmed my eyeshadow palette collection video last year. I hadn't played with this yet, uh, but I have by now, and I do like it, but it wasn't my favorite. So that's why I decided to buy the Land of Fire and Ice to see if I like this better and this color story, you guys. Oh my word, I can't wait to play with this. And then Alien Cosmetics Fairy Frolic and Serendipity palettes. Uh, this is a brand I'm currently actually trying out. The Serendipity is the one I'm currently in the midst of trying. And I have to say I'm very impressed with it because when I swatched this, I wasn't impressed. And now because it seemed to be overly pigmented for my tastes, but now that I'm trying it, I'm like, ooh. I did one look with it so far, so I still need to try it a bit more before I can give my full thoughts. Fairy Frolic is being restocked, at, uh, I think, the day after this video goes live, uh, and it's going to have square pans from now on. And then we have Slush palettes from September Rose Cosmetics. If you need a good bright palette, you guys, Slush 1 and the Slush 2. This is a full-blown matte rainbow color story. This is a bit more pastel and neon leaning. So for me, for my fair skin, this one is actually my favorite uh, because it just works a lot better on me. And I mean, it's got some stunning shades. I mean, it's really, really pretty. And then this guy here, it really has all the like basics that you could possibly want. So this and the Certify, those are my favorite rainbow color stories. So thank you very much for watching today's video. Those were all of the eyeshadow palettes that I have in my collection. And I like doing these videos every year because it really shows me where my sort of personal makeup tastes are taking me. And I think that I'm now really going into the smaller palette direction where a few years ago, most of my collection was 12 pans and up. I think I've really fallen hard in recent years for like smaller five, six to nine pan palettes. And that's really where my collection is heading. So it would be fun to go back to an old video and to count up all the pans I have and see if now I still have an equal amount of palettes, but maybe I have fewer pans because I have so many little palettes, you could say. Um, it would be a fun experience, experiment to go over sometime, but that's, that's a video for another day. Uh, so thank you very much for being here. I liked having you here on the channel. If you'd like to stick around and just share the eyeshadow love, then definitely, tr definitely subscribe because I make regular eyeshadow palette related content, as well as videos about a lot of Essence and Catrice products. I like to talk about a whole host of things on here and I throw in the, the 
uh, odd fashion video every once in a while because I do like a bit of fashion too. Uh, so if that sounds like something you might be interested to, then I would love for you to stick around and join my little family here. And if you uh, do not, then that's fine as well. Uh, you, you are in no way obliged to do all of those things. But if you liked what you saw here, then I really hope you would like to come back sometime and we can chat again soon. So thank you very much for watching today, everyone. I hope you have a great day. Take care and hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.